TechBlock Chorus. Uh, we're going to talk about how to use TechBlock Chorus CFD simulation analytics for an unsteady blade optimization case. Simulation analytics is the union of visualization, data management, statistics, and data mining for sets of CFD solutions. What we're going to talk about in the next example is how we can go from a series of test or solution files into a project that will allow us to more accurately evaluate a system of information. With TechBlock Chorus, we'll show you how you can analyze hundreds or even thousands of solutions and compare the results with ease. Finally, using this strategy, one can evaluate the derived quantities of a complete system and use modern surrogate models to model the system performance. Okay, in this project, we're going to take a look at uh, an unsteady blade optimization. And we're going to take a look from start to finish on how you can evaluate those results using TechBlock Cores. As you can see, we have a bunch of files, each one of which is a solution. We'll go ahead and open this up quickly. We'll use TechBlock 360. You could use any post processor in principle. We'll look at a 2D image. We're going to zoom in. You can see we're looking at a, a vertical wind turbine. We have three airfoils. And we're looking at uh, basically a cross section. You can <coughs> evaluate the stream traces just by adding in some stream traces here. And uh, another thing we may want to do is instead of looking at pressure, we perhaps could look at turbulence vis turbulent viscosity. Um, and if we like this style, we can kind of save that then as a template. And we can use that as a start point later when we get into TechBlock cores. Although we could use macros to try to go through and analyze the results we have, uh, we're going to go ahead and use TechBlock Chorus, and we're going to go from a series of files directly into a project that we can look at and understand how the optimizations change the overall performance of the system. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new project. We're going to use a simple SQL database, SQLite, to uh, just manage kind of where the data are. It's just links to the information and perhaps any derived quantities. We'll call this Blades, and we'll change the project name to Blade or blades optimization. And since this data was actually uh, run using Fluent, why don't we say uh, using Fluent 12.1. Now this information may become important later if we have multiple projects. We're going to use a file crawler and we'll navigate to the right directory. And uh, then we're going to use the fact that blade, for example, is in the file name and that'll pick up the blade information. And time, in this case, will bring up the time step. And you have to make sure that the cases uh, fit. We'll also use the fact that these are PLT files. And we'll call this, say, the, the data or the data file. Once we hit Next, make sure that we change, change the display name. OK, now Chorus has actually built out a quick table. And each one of the columns uh, you see here shows an independent variable, in this case, blade and time step. And each row represents a solution. Let's go ahead and select the data file to do a quick deep dive to see what we have in our database. Now we can go through and take advantage of some work we've already done by grabbing a base style file. So let's browse to the directory real quick and we'll pick up a style file we've already put together. And we're going to apply that to the first solution. That'll open up in TechBlock 360. Let's zoom in. We can just take a quick look at what's going on with the system by looking at the pressure coming off in the individual blades. Now let's pop back into TechPlot Chorus since it looks like this style file is going to work for us. Now let's leverage the fact that we have this style file and apply it to all the solutions in our database. OK, now let's select all images, the solutions. Let's right click and let's create new plot images for our database. This is where we can browse to the files we've already created, and we're going to apply that style to all the data files that we've selected in our database. Let's navigate to the style file, which uh, is in our base directory. And we'll hit OK. Once we have the batch job running, you can see that, in fact, it's going to go through and create a series of PNG files that we can use to populate our database and evaluate the physics of the entire system. While the batch job is running, let's go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we've done some work 
we're going to bring in the derived quantities by looking at the integrated pressure on each of the cross sections for each of the turbine blades. Let's navigate through. We're going to grab a CSV file that contains the integrated quantities. And uh, we're going to bring those data in. And we're going to append them to the existing results that we brought in when we did our file crawl. Chorus picked up the fact that blade and time step were already in our database. And so we'll append the derived quantities directly to the solutions based on blade and time step. And let's validate, in fact, that the import went correctly by just expanding the table view and looking at the derived quantities. So I'll expand out my table. You can see that, in fact, it brought in uh, integrated pressure on each blade, as well as the total integrated pressure on all three blades in the system. Let's take a quick look at a 3D view of the data that we brought in. These are the derived quantities. And we'll just shift from blade to total. It is perhaps easier to take a look at each integrated pressure for the system on a blade by blade basis. OK, let's evaluate perhaps time step versus the total pressure. Um, we'll group the data by blade and perhaps just sort it by time step. So you can see that uh, here's a simple XY line plot. Let's go ahead and fit that with a quadratic response surface. And once we have that fit, we can then evaluate each blade individually by going and looking at each blade. So we'll look at blade one, and we can just use the slider bar to look at each individual blade. And we'll save this plot out on the desktop. So it looks like our batch job is completed, which means our images are ready for deposit into the database. We're going to manage those jobs by selecting Manage Jobs and deposit the results right in our database. So we're starting to build out a little bit more of a project. And now we have some images that we can do some comparisons on. So we can evaluate what the effective changes to the blade system, what those changes had on the performance of the system as a whole. Let's go ahead now and look at what we call a matrix view of the data, where we're going to look at the two dependent or independent variables and review all the images we have for the system. Let's switch back to a range filter so we can see all of our blade configurations. And uh, we'll look at blade versus time step. You can see we have quite a few time steps here. We actually uh, should perhaps zoom out so you can see all the results. Well, let's look at blade configuration three. Mm. Now we'll look at those images, and what we're going to do is zoom in, or zoom out actually, and we're going to look at it one image at a time. And now I can kind of go back and forth, go up and down, and just kind of see how the system is behaving over time. And so this is an easy way for me to understand how the system is changing. Now let's take a look at one time step for all the blades. Let's select our base image. To understand the variation in blade configuration, let's take a difference from our base image. We can see very quickly what the differences of the images are for our system. Now let's go ahead and view the data for that t equals zero case. With the data in our physics visualization tool, we can now dive in and take a look at each individual blade configuration. We'll kind of put them in a, a view that makes sense. Let's apply some labels. And we'll make the labels a little easier to view by making them a little larger. When I have them in a larger configuration, I also can just synchronize that style. And so you can see that the labels are the same across each solution. Now I may actually want to look at things like stream traces or um, in the context of what I'm looking at now, there may be a lot of things I want to look at, contour levels and so forth. But ideally, we're going to put ourselves in a position where we can evaluate these data in the context of any time step. So let's go back and review our project. So in this example, you can see that Chorus allows us then to manage a very complex system of information for five blade configurations at 10 time steps. For more information or to try it out on your data, visit us at www.techplot.com.